Today we are going to be comparing fractions using the benchmark of one half to help us. Our learning target is I can compare proper fractions. Let's start by brainstorming fractions that are equal to one half. So one half is written with a numerator of one and a denominator of two. Next should have a numerator of two and remember, my denominator should always be double the numerator. So if I double 2, that would be 4. If my numerator is 3, I double 3, and that equals 6. With the numerator 4, 4 doubled is 8. 5, 5 doubled is 10. And with the numerator of 6, we double that, and our denominator is 12. So we have 1 half, 2 fourths, 3 sixths, 4 eighths, 5 tenths, and 6 twelfths. All those fractions are equal to 1 half. So let's compare these two fractions. First, let's identify them. I see the first fraction has a unit fraction of 1 sixth, so my denominator is going to be a 6, and there are 5 pieces that are shaded. If I look at my other fraction, I see 1 piece is shaded, and there are 4 total pieces in the whole, so that fraction is 1 fourth. So let's think of what fraction of this whole is 1 half. So I can draw a line down the middle, and I see that that's exactly 1 half. Remember, we want to keep the denominator of 6 when we're counting our pieces. So 1, 2, 3 pieces are equal to 1 half. With 1 fourth, we want to break it in half just the same, and I see that there are two pieces on each side of the half, so 2 fourths equals 1 half. So I compare my fraction to the half. So 5 sixths compared to 3 sixths. I know 5 sixths is greater than 3 sixths, so I draw an up arrow. Next I'm looking at 1 fourth and I'm comparing it to 2 fourths. I know that 1 fourth is less than 2 fourths, so I put a down arrow. Here I can easily identify the correct sign. I know one fraction, 5 sixths, is greater than 1 half, and the other fraction, 1 fourth, is lower than 1 half, which tells me that 5 sixths is my greater fraction. So 5 sixths is greater than and not equal to 1 fourth. You can also use the pictures here to help. On 5 sixths, you can see that the purple has so much more shaded in than the green on 1 fourth. Let's try another one. So remember, we're going to start by identifying the fraction. Here I see that there are two pieces shaded in and there are eight pieces in the hole. And here there are three pieces shaded in with six pieces in the hole. Let's identify 1 half. Remember to keep our denominators the same. So, I can start by drawing that line down the middle. I see that there are one, two, three, four pieces on each side. Remember, if I double my numerator, it should give me the denominator. So when I double four, four plus four equals eight, so I know that is correct. Here, we can draw that line down the middle again, and we see one, two, three. Three pieces out of six pieces in the hole. Now, let's compare two eighths to four eighths. I know that two pieces is less than four pieces, so I'm going to put a down arrow. Two eighths is less than four eighths. Three sixths compared to three sixths. Hmm, those are exactly the same. So if our fraction is equal to one half, we would put an exclamation point. So I have one fraction, two eighths, that is less than one half, and three sixths, which is equal to one half. Let's think about which fraction has to be bigger, the one that's smaller than one half or the one that is equal to one half. Here, we know that the one that is equal to one half is the bigger fraction. So, our sentence here would be two eighths is less than and not equal to three sixths. Now, if you take a look at the three sixths fraction over here, you'll see that I split it down the middle but I can split it down the middle another way. And that's right like this. As long as I have three pieces on both sides, I would know that that line that I'm dividing is the halfway line. Let's try another fraction. 
So, let's identify our first fraction. I want to see that there are one, two, three, four, five, six pieces shaded and eight pieces in the hole, so that is six eighths. And here I have one, two, three, and there are six pieces in the hole. So, we identify our halves. Remember, we want to keep our denominators matching. So, if my denominator is an 8, I know my numerator has to be a 4 to be 1 half. And if my denominator is 6, then I need 3. Here, we're going to split our lines like last time. We'll split them across. So, 6 eighths compared to 4 eighths, I know that 6 eighths is greater than 1 half and 3 sixths compared to 3 sixths is equal to 1 half. So let's think again, which fraction is going to be bigger, the one that is larger than 1 half or the one that is equal to 1 half? Think for a minute and take a look at your pictures. Here we know that 6 eighths is going to be the greater fraction. So you would say 6 eighths is greater than and not equal to 3 sixths. Last question. Let's identify our fractions here. We've got one half and four eighths. Okay, remember our next step is to identify what one half is equal to. So let's start with one half. Well, one half is equal to one half. So there we can see that. And with four eighths, we have to think of our denominator of eight and half of eight would give me four. So I'm comparing one half to one half. Those are exactly the same. So we draw our exclamation point. Next, we have comparing four eighths to four eighths. Those are also exactly the same. So both of these fractions are equal to one half. You can see as we draw our lines straight down the middle of our fraction circles. So here, the fractions are exactly the same. They are both equal to one half even though they are represented differently. Taking the time to show this strategy is going to be very helpful, especially when we are comparing fractions with denominators and numerators that are not the same. Yes, it takes a couple extra steps, but in the end it was very helpful. So thanks for learning about comparing fractions using the benchmark of one half. See you next time.